Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the basics of cruise flight in the Cessna 152 in Flight Simulator 2020. Now first thing I want to say is this is day two that this program has been out, so there might be some anomalies that you see kind of as we kind of set things up, but in general it's going to work fairly well. Alright, so now that you know what all the different instruments on the aircraft basically do that you're going to be worrying about doing basic flights, now let's actually figure out if we can go anywhere with a particular airplane. So with aircraft, uh, the big thing we usually use if you're just kind of starting out would be something like GPS, or you'd be using, of course, you know, the flight instructor basically saying, take a right, take a right. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a really, really short hop to a lake nearby that has some pretty good boating. So I happen to know that this lake exists on a heading of about 310 degrees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn the plane. Now, when you turn the plane, the thing that's actually making the plane turn is the horizontal component of lift. You're sitting there going, what? Basically what that says is the more lift I put into the turn, the faster the turn. But what I want you to observe when I do turn is the fact that this aircraft, when it turns, it starts to dive a little bit. That's because some of the lift we were using to go up is now being converted into the lift that's allowing this aircraft to change its present heading. So because of that, you always have to pull back just a little bit. When you're first learning to fly, uh, one of the things I usually recommend is keeping it at about 30 degrees as your absolute maximum as far as tilt goes. So that's about the limit. You don't want to go too much more with that. Remember, the more you tilt, the more you have a tendency to overcompensate. So what I'm actually going to do is go ahead and line ourselves back up at that little lake over there in the distance. But first what I'm going to do is uh, make that weather you know, settle down a little bit. I think that's getting a little disorienting for our folks at home, so to speak. Ah, that's much better. Of course, in the real world at these altitudes, it's always windy, so there's nothing new there. Okay, so now I've lined myself up with the general heading that I want to be traveling on. It's about 315 degrees. How do I know? I'm looking down at this instrument here. Remember, this instrument needs to reset every once in a while. Surprise, the instrument was set incorrectly. I went to see if anybody noticed that. You can always reset it off of this, or again, just tap the D key. That's just simulating the pilot looking at this thing real quick. In the real world, we can't really use this for navigation because we get bounced around a little too much and it becomes very difficult to actually read. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring myself closer to 310. So when we're cruising with the aircraft, uh, we want to an altitude that's appropriate for our cruising. In the United States, they have certain rules as far as how high you have to fly off the ground. Again, it's a flight simulator. You can decide what is high enough is. For a propeller-driven aircraft, usually anywhere between 3,000 and 5,000 is a pretty safe height. Or if you're looking for something more specific, being at least 500 feet off the ground if you're dealing with trees, or at least about 700 to 1,000 feet off the ground if you're dealing with any sort of buildings. Now, when you're flying the aircraft, you want to make sure that you're not cruising at full throttle. If you have engine damage off, feel free to cruise at full throttle. It just makes for a slightly louder experience. So what do I mean by that? Well, if you take a look over here on the right, you can see that my engine RPM right now is about 2,300 RPM. That's actually a pretty solid RPM. If I push the throttle forward, you're going to notice the RPM comes up. We speed up a little bit. If I pull the RPM at the throttle backwards, you're going to notice we're going to lose RPM. Different aircraft have different ways of setting power. This particular aircraft, we just manipulate the throttle until we get the RPM at an RPM that actually makes sense for us. In this case, I like to cruise at just about 2300 RPM, which is going to be right there. Next thing we want to do is we want to be able to get the aircraft so we don't have to work the controls and push down or push up on them at all times. This is done through setting the trim of the aircraft. To set the trim, once you get to the altitude you want to crow's get to, use your pitch up command to go ahead, I should say elevator pitch up, elevator trim up, there we go, command to go ahead and make the nose come up a little bit. Use the elevator down in order to go ahead and make it come down. So basically what I'm doing right now is I'm just holding the joystick very gently in my fingers and pressing those buttons until I see that the vertical speed down here indicates about zero. Keep in mind it takes a moment to settle. You want to always set your power and things like that before you start racing around with your trim, otherwise you're going to have a full-time job trying to get that nice and trimmed out. That's looking pretty darn good. If you had an automatic pilot, we could probably get that even tighter if we wanted to. Remember, you're not going to be able to trim this thing out smoothly until you've gotten your speed under control. If you're in really, really bad turbulence, it can be difficult to set your trim. So a lot of times I'll actually take another look over at the altimeter. Normally we don't travel at weird altitudes like this, but for today's example, this is just what I'm going to do. Hey, we made it to our lake. Lovely. I think, uh, what do we got? I think that's some kind of school or something up on the top of the hill there. 
Yeah, it's got to be. It's got the little fields and everything. And now we are directly over the lake, and we can see all the nice little lake houses, and I imagine there's a couple power boats. Everything is uh, streaming in right now, which is why it's getting just a little chunky. Now, of course, now that we've done that, you've noticed that even though I looked away, my aircraft stayed at the same altitude because I took so much time to set that trim carefully. Setting trim is difficult. It's going to take a lot of practice to get it right. So let's go ahead and turn ourselves around and head back from which we came. All right, spin around. I have a feeling we just streamed uh, half of the center of Connecticut when we just had a little bit of spike there, but that happens. Now, one of the cool things is if the opposite, if we traveled about 300 degrees to get there, you can actually look where the needle is, and it says we need to travel at about 300 or about, uh, let's say, 120 degrees to get back from which we came. Keep in mind, as we're rotating like this, we don't want to overdo it, because again, we're just going to start gaining or losing altitude. Try to keep those initial turns very gentle. Once we get to the heading we want to, we want to roll out, overshot it just a little bit. But again, it's tough to fly and think at the same time as they say. All right, and then we're just going to cruise our way right back from which we came. And that was really all there was to the cruising sequence. Now, navigation is really its own thing, and we're not going to look too, too much at that today. There's really a lot of different ways to get around from place to place. But the key thing is, you know, make sure you're setting the correct power, especially if you have engine stress on, and learn how to use trim to make your flight a little bit smoother. Some aircraft, of course, have automatic pilot, which makes this even easier, but this particular one does not. So we can't take advantage of that and cool little quick trim feature that's built into it. So hopefully this helps as far as learning to trim, as far as learning how to cruise. Keep in mind, if you have points of interest turned on as an assist, you can actually see little arrows in the air that tell you where everything is nearby to where you're flying. And you could literally just fly right up to them, which is just an awesome way to do it. Another really cool thing that's worth noting too, is if you were to go to third person view just temporarily, oh, looks like we forgot to put our flaps up. Whoa, look at that little sink there. You'll notice you can actually see what your engine power setting is very, very, very clearly. Don't cruise with your flaps down, folks. When you do that, it's just going to slow you down and also you run the risk of damaging them. I was wondering why we were going so slow. <laughs> Always use checklists, but again, that's for another day. Next time, we'll take a look at stalls, which are a scary thing to think about, but they're re not really as dangerous as people make them out to be, unless, of course, you try to do it in an airliner. Enjoy.